going to talk about experimenting with a multi-camera rig and uh, shooting full long and real footage. I will try to show the workflow, the problems, the challenges um, of shooting projects in this way. And to structure my talk, I will use the workflow itself, uh, pre-production, production, post-production, post as a kind of structure here. Um, but first, some information about me. Uh, my name is Uke Hahn. I'm uh, currently in a PhD program at Bowers University. And my PhD focuses aesthetic and narration within uh, television serials. And uh, the project I will use um, to explain my uh, pool room rig um, is part of this um, PhD, a small little experiment within this PhD. The project is called Habitat. It's a short movie, actually um, um, a pilot of a narrative serial, the first two episodes of a drama, sci-fi kind of serial. More episodes might be produced in the future. Um, the pilot was shot in two uh, versions, 16 by 9 HD and um, full room 3K. The reason for that is I wanted to compare the different space aesthetics between both meteors, um, similar to my former project Breakfast, but Breakfast was only shot in front of a blue screen, so now uh, shooting 78% in real footage um, gave me a new perspective. So I tried uh, to get a deeper, um, deeper insights into the question of space here. The rig I would like to introduce now, or the development of the rig, is of course part of the pre-production phase, um, being an experiment, a small experiment, and there are two major goals. Of course, the rig should work, and uh, in a way that we don't have had to spend a lot of money constructing it or renting all the cameras necessary to complete it. So uh, by trial and error and um, some inspiring tutorials about 360 degree movies, not full movies especially, um, we found our own way, our own solution um, using the well-known action cam GoPro in its second generation. The rig is built up of six of them. Um, they are mounted in a way that one is shooting the front, one the left, one the back, and two are sharing the top view. Um, the rig is, is here. <laughs> it's not beautiful, but it worked. Um, so, all cameras are mounted on this plate, and um, which can be used on a tripod. So have, you have the advantages of a tripod, of a rig, uh, of a tripod, and you can change the angle of your rig and so on. In order to stitch all the images, of course, every camera has its own perspective, its own position in, t in space. So. To stitch all um, images or video files later on, um, the field of use of every camera has to overlap um, minimum three times. So every camera is overlapping at least with three neighboring cameras of the rig. So just before going uh, onto the set, onto the production, you have to choose um, the right setup. Of course, the GoPro offers not many options, but shooting in 1080p or 960p and the frame rate of 30 frames per second uh, works quite well. Um, and so we can go onto the set. Yeah, and there are several um, quite obvious problems shooting in real footage. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, where to put the audio devices. Um, that was a great problem. Um, of course, traditional ways like using a boom mic uh, won't work anymore. It would be visible all the time. So uh, we used several audio devices um, below um, the rig. Um, and first we thought uh, that might be it, that will work, but um, recording sound from a distance, especially dialogues, can be quite tricky sometimes. So we were afraid um, that the dialogue's quality would be terrible bad, and we decided to use um, these devices below the rig to record background noises only. To record the dialogues, um, we used lavalier microphones, which had to be covered inside the act of clothing, which is tricky sometimes too, but uh, in the end it worked quite well. Okay, another quite obvious problem is, of course, um, finding the proper location to shoot 360 to 180 degrees. Um, traditional techniques like cutting together, take by take, cut by cut, your room, your um, set um, you have in mind won't work here anymore, so finding the proper location can be quite a challenge itself. In our case, we used the sad, futuristic architecture of the Bowers University's library. Um, but even there, we had to make some small adjustments on set and in the post-production to look to make it look li like a futuristic um, room or complex. And of course, especially in projects like this, without a little, with only little money and time, 
um, we were not able to develop a well-working system to check the future footage during shooting. And that can be quite annoying if you want to direct the scene, but uh, you are not able to see what the camera is capturing. The only way was to open all uh, camera cases, remove the SD cards, transfer the data onto a notebook, and check it there, but the short production time forced us to skip this kind of procedure. So um, we discussed every scene in every detail, um, because during the shooting, the actors were on their own. Uh, the team has to hide or had to hide. So in the future, solutions like wireless transfer, uh, the video signal to another room uh, would be nice. And so the hiding team uh, can watch what is happening on set. And of course, um, using six, um, multi -cam six cameras or even more additional audio devices, the first thing to do on set is prepare the post-production. I think that's uh, quite similar to traditional filming. Um, in this project, we didn't use an advanced time code generating device, so we used a very traditional technique to synchronize all um, devices by using a clap. But of course, there's no way to put the clap in front of all cameras at one point in time, so the clapping itself has simply to be loud enough that there's a search on the soundtrack later on in the post-production that is uh, visible, so you can use it um, to synchronize all your material. I'm oh, sorry, did you trigger the recording with the remote, is it? How do you initiate the recording of each camera music? Every uh, one for its own, and then we ran away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on every uh, clip, now we see uh, the teammates pushing the okay. start buttons. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, um, using six camera means, um, of course, I already mentioned it, that you won't be able to position them in one point of space. I think that's quite obvious. It's not a virtual rig, it's a real rig. There are camera bodies, camera lenses, camera perspectives. So each camera has its own position and so on. And to guarantee the necessary overlaps, um, and that is nothing outside the field of use or in between uh, some of these gaps, um, all objects have, all acting has to be outside a radius of uh, approximately two meters. So, um, that there are no, no problems later on in the post-production. Okay, of course that makes location scouting even more difficult. Um, shooting in small rooms uh, is nearly impossible, so um, the location has to be big enough, there has to be enough empty space around the tripod. Okay, having finished the, location, uh, the shooting, the production, the post-production starts, and here we go. In this example we have um, six cameras and additional audio files, and um, yeah, to match all this material, um, we use uh, um, software Adobe Premiere. Of course, you can use any other editing software for that purpose too. You can cut all the material to the same length after you uh, use the search on the soundtrack to synchronize all your material. So, um, next step is to um, render all the six files of this example uh, scene, the video files, to a PNG sequence, uh, that's the way we did it. Um, and now you've got, uh, now you've got one scene, six folders, each folder for one camera, each folder containing perhaps 1,001 PNG files, and uh, you may think, why not start stitching now? Uh, but that would be far too easy. Um, the good thing, the good thing on the software we used, um, the software is called Panorama Tools Graphic User Interface, is that the software allows to stitch and render a whole sequence based on only one template, so you don't have to stitch every frame on its own, which would be an impossible task, but the software only accepts following file structure to do so. Um, per um, frame, per intended fulldom frame, there has to be one folder. In our examples, there have to be 1001 folders, each folder has to contain all six parts of this intended frame. So, uh, for example, in folder 260, there has to be um, frame 260 camera top, 260 camera left, and so on and so on. So every, uh, every of this part has to be in the same folder. Of course, you can do the reorganization by your own, uh, or a trainee can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but in our case, we used a small Mac app, um, especially created um, for this project by Andreas Trapper to reorganize all the files. So um, that is uh, 
the fastest solution. Okay, now the stitching can start, the stitching of the template can start. And um, yes, um, you have to choose one of these folders with its six parts. Um, it doesn't have to be folder one, it can be or folder zero, it can be any frame of the scene you might think works very well. And hopefully your rig is constructed well because if, uh, during the shooting one of the cameras is moving slightly, um, the stitching result is uh, terrible. In our case, um, glad we, gladly we didn't have this kind of problems, but um, it might be a problem if the construction isn't that good. The software tries to find matching points on its own, but most of the time you have to, have to add control points by yourself to enhance the results of the stitching. And the result um, may look this way in the preview mode. Oops, okay. In the preview mode, um, but there is it again. Uh, the different positions in space of all six cameras are, ca are causing uh, flaws in the final panoramas. Close and moving objects are sometimes distorted, especially besides and on the seam. Um, at least we weren't able to eliminate all that flaws in the short production time. Um, perhaps um, there is a way or you have to try harder during the stitching. Um, here's a moving example of that particular flaw in this area. You see with one or two frames there's a, there's a little flaw. Nevertheless, um, to render the whole sequence, um, the next step is to render the whole sequence based on the template. So 1000 files are created based on the parameters we defined within the template. We have a patch builder, the software renders uh, the whole sequence. Unfortunately, um, the results are um, rectangular panoramas only. So we have a sequence of rectangular panoramas, there's no full on option. Um, and the sequence uh, may, or the images of the sequence may look this way. This, this way. Mm -hmm. The empty black area is caused by a kind of uh, or a lack of information in a way. The panorama is, image is a spherical one, 360 to 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we didn't use additional cameras below the rig, so um, there would be cameras below here. Um, so the information of the six cameras only provide more than a little bit than a half the sphere, um, half the panorama image in this way. Not having the dome master yet, you have to use another software. Um, we use After Effects to create the well-known circular images. Um, there are two ways. The first and easiest is to um, use the uh, effect polar coordinates to create um, from your rectangular panorama sequence circular images. Um, and this could be it, the end of your production. Perhaps um, a little bit um, color correction after effects, but I presume without any complex visual effects, um, and like adding objects or set extensions, um, because I think it's quite, quite difficult to um, add objects and complex effects only looking at a panorama or a rectangular image. Um, so not getting a preview of the space, the perspective of your objects you want to add. So um, we found another way, a more, um, a more natural way in a way. Um, with After Effects again, um, we created a composition, added a five camera rig, and uh, imported the panorama sequence, and then we applied the effect Horizon by Trapco. It's, uh, um, uh, plug in for After Effects, and this plug in simulates a sphere within After Effects. So, um, with the virtual camera rig, you can look from one point of space, like in the center of the sphere, around, so the image is, isn't distorted anymore. You can uh, look around from this perspective and, of course, um, change the camera perspective here. Um, and now you are able to um, add effects in a more natural way, seeing um, the perspective, control the perspectives of your objects. Okay, and here you can see the results of that uh, method. Uh, we used this method to, to add all effects in the final um, panorama, in the final circular image, um, and this uh, natural kind of view from the audience perspective helps helps a lot to um, do so. 
because the six cameras are capturing more than 180 degrees, you can uh, change the tilt of your angle of the virtual camera rig right here, so you don't have to do it on set already. Um, slightly, slightly you can change it here, um, perhaps to get the, um, the tilt to the point of interest or something like that. Finally, the Dome Master can be exported um, using, of course, um, the software GLOM or uh, with an After Effects, the full Dome plugin to do so. And now you've got one master scene with effects, with complex effects added. Okay, as a conclusion, um, I have to say there are of course several issues and problems you have to keep in mind working with a multi-camera rig or especially a GoPro rig. The different positions of uh, the cameras, um, the need of overlaps and so on um, make it necessary to find large locations. There are stitching flaws that can be quite annoying, and, uh, especially if you can't find a solution to get rid of them. Um, the second GoPro generation with no uh, monitor or built-in transfer systems, um, wireless transfer systems is uh, complicating the cameraman and the director's work on set. And multi-cameras themselves uh, being action cams run on automatic functions all the time. So, there's, uh, so they are in a way very uh, semi-professional and you cannot control the image in the way you are used to working with professional cameras. But I think there are some um, striking pros too. The camera is, is low priced compared to every other camera system. The rent is low, um, it's very robust underwater. Uh, <coughs> Snow, everything, no problem in this way. Using GoPros and in general uh, multi camera rigs, you are able to shoot more than 180 degrees, perhaps 210 degrees, so you can present uh, the floor of your location uh, and you can show that your actor has got feet or something like that. And you are even able to change the hemisphere slightly in post production, and you don't have to do it on set, I already mentioned that too. Theoretically, you can shoot nearly 360 degrees just by adding two more cameras below the rig, um, so you can uh, change the virtual camera rig in post-production dramatically. And uh, I think that it's a great option for expressive camera movements in your final movie. So capturing more than 180 degrees is, uh, um, the, I think, the great advantage compared to one camera solutions with um, only uh, one fisheye lens. Yes, and as a kind of gimmick, you can uh, fake full dome movies using only one camera on the rig's position one after another. So, uh, like in this case, um, it's a fun movie we shot additional to uh, Habitat. There's the same person uh, three times in this uh, movie, and just by using all the cameras position, uh, all the rig's positions one after another. So, just um, shoot one part of the dialogue first and then the other. So. In projects where there's no action, like moving around the rig or the set is not changing all the time, this can be a quite simple uh, a solution for small projects. Okay, referring to um, to Habitat again, um, I think um, besides um, some flaws, the final result was worth all the trouble, and I think we were able to create. Uh, uh, funny little um, experiments, experience um, in full dome, which hope, hopefully serves the um, visual aesthetics of the media, and at least uh, like every experiment should do, um, we were able to get new perspectives to the um, real footage problem, so um, you or we can do better next time. Um, yeah, perhaps that, uh, that's it. And I hope uh, my little talk was listen worth listening to. If you like, contact me. I can uh, send you the presentation if you want to um, uh, read through it again. Um.